Lord, we thank you for today, and we give you the praise that you deserve, dear God. And Lord, we acknowledge you as God, and Lord, you are God no matter how we treat you, dear God. You remain faithful to us. You remain sovereign. And Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We come this morning, dear God, praying that you would use this, your vessel, Lord, in a way that will bless your people. But Lord, it's my prayer that you would allow their hearts to receive what it is that's going to be shared. Lord, they not, not focus so much on the messenger, but Lord, that they hear what the messenger has to say. Pray right now, you have mercy on us today, dear God. And do what you want to do within us. We praise you, love you, and we thank you. We thank you for what you've done thus far, whatever you decide to do in the time to come. So in the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray and thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. This morning, amen, we're going to continue, amen, what we've shared, amen, on last week as it relates to, as it relates to the church body. And I'll go ahead and read the scripture on today, amen, and we're going to finish this passage of scripture, amen, as the Holy Spirit allows us to. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, it says, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipment of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth and love may grow up in all things and unto him who is the head Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by whatever joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Amen. The grass withered and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. We're going to continue, amen, uh, our, our talk on the church the church body, amen, the church body, and we're going to see what God has to tell us, amen. We shared uh, in previous times that when we take a look at the church, the church body, God has established the church body to be in a certain order, and so when we take a look at the church body, we've got to understand that God placed things in order the way he decided to so that the body could function what in a in a certain way i'm going to use this example um many of us watch the saints amen on christmas day amen go saints amen praise the lord and so the saints amen if you take a look just take a look at the saints team right when you take a look at the team the team is structured and ordered in a certain way now watch check it out sometimes what we do is we we try to spiritualize things so much to where we we miss the simplicity of what god really wants us to see Right. So when you take a look, look at the saints, there's a head coach, there's assistant coaches. Amen. There's those that help those to train. Right. And there's those that help the players to be physically fit. Um, there's the players. The players have different roles and responsibilities. You've got the quarterback. Amen. You've got the O-line and you've got your running backs and all the people that work. And then you have your defense to where you have those who are on defense. Right. Stopping the other team from advancing. And so when you take a look at that order, you've got to understand that. Guess what? The church is no different from any other organization, right, as it relates to being or having what? Having order. Now, the only thing in the body of Christ, we've got to make sure that the order that we actually operate in is the order, what, that God really wants us to operate with. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what we can't do, we can't try to carbon copy what we do after what the world does. No, we've got to take a look, what, at the word of God, see what the word of God has to say, see how God what established the church, and then we operate and we function according to the way God what designed it to function. Can I help you? That's even in your homes. You can't ask God to bless your mess. If your family's out of order, if people don't know their role, if those don't know their place, and people don't know what they're supposed to be doing, can I help you? You're gonna have chaos, what, and confusion, right? And so what you'll have is you it'll be just like a body, amen, hear me and hear me well, it'll be just like a body, amen, that suffers from epilepsy.
Whoa, Pastor, where that came from? Because why? Because the body and the brain is not functioning the way it should. Amen. Praise the Lord. I pray somebody received that. And so when you take a look at the church body, God designed the church body to operate and to function what? In a certain way. And anything that's out of place or if there's not the communication from the brain to the body, what happens is the body decides to do what it wants to do and it looks kind of odd, right? Right, as it relates to what it does. And so God has established a certain order, what, in the church body. And can I help you? If we want our, if we want our congregations to be stronger, right, if we want our, our, our relationships as brothers and sisters in Christ to be stronger, if we want our churches to what, to thrive, we've got to make sure we don't ignore what God, what, has established. And so when we take a look at it, right, the Bible starts off in verse 11, and it says he gave some apostles, some some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, teachers, watch, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So here's the thing. What pastor is doing right now, amen, is to help you to go out, amen, praise the Lord, and do God's work and do God's business. Amen. That is God's order. And then the Bible talks in 1 Corinthians 12 along with Romans 12 about the body, what, having many members, right? Different functions, but what? The same, the same spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. So when you take a look at a body, even though there's differences that you will see, even though one may be able to do one thing, one may be able to do something else, another may be able to do something else, you've got to understand everybody that's a part of the body should be working toward what? Accomplishing the same exact goal. Amen. I'm going to use this as an example. If I want to walk to the other end of this parking lot, amen, my toes have to agree with my foot that I'm going over there or I'm going to have some problems. Amen. Praise the Lord. Right? So you've got to understand this one thing. We've got to all be going in the same direction, doing the same thing to try to get where we need to get so that we can get from what? Point A to point B. And so we can do God's work and do it what? All to his glory. And we talked also about in the Bible, not only that God has placed those in the body of Christ to help equip and teach the saints to do what it is that God has called them to do. But also, it talked about being a perfect man and growing up, right? And not being bamboozled by different doctrines, right? Not being tricked by men who come along with all these other, what? All these other doctrines, amen, praise the Lord, that are what? That are not of God, right? And so, as the body, we've got to make sure that we get the right instructions, we get the right information, and we allow ourselves to be exposed to the right stuff so that when we move and have our being, we look like we know the God that we say we serve. I also shared with us on last week that guess what that those uh, uh that those are immature and that those who are what are all mature and so those who are immature right need those who are all mature to help what lead them in the what in the right direction and those who are immature sh should be able to rely on those who are mature to be able to get to a level of growth and one travesty i've seen even in the body of christ i've seen new believers i I've seen those who are immature look to those who should be mature, amen, only to be disappointed and let down because those who are mature don't understand that they are responsible for those who are not as mature. And it says by the what? Trickery of men and cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. And so you've got to understand in the body of Christ, the enemy is going to send people, amen, who's going to try to bamboozle you, who's going to try to, you know, have that sweet talk, amen, praise the Lord, that's going to come and try to, you know, get your money out your pocketbook, going to try to get you to do stuff you shouldn't do. And let me tell you where I am personally in my own personal life. I'm getting real upset with folk who's taking advantage of old folk, amen, praise the Lord, because that's what the enemy does, amen, he tries to use those that 
that he can manipulate and those he can try to sway in his direction. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you got these old people sending folk all that money in the mail and sending their money to this one and sending their money to that one. Amen. If you send me $20, you're going to get a $1,000 blessing. God going to strike them dead for doing stuff like that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Right? But God going to handle up on those who do that and manipulate those who are older. But guess what? We shouldn't be tricked. We shouldn't be tossed to and fro. We shouldn't be manipulated by any other doctrine that God what is not is not pleased with. Amen. And look what it says in verse 15. It says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head Christ. Look what it says. Speaking the truth. What? In love. Speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head Christ. The Bible talks about those who have what? Itching ears. Right? Let me tell you what that means. That means that's an individual. They want to hear what they want to hear. They don't care nothing about the truth. Right? And so the Bible says that you ought to accept truth. Amen. In love. Amen. Why? Show me somebody who won't accept the truth and I'll show you somebody who's going to stay stuck where they are. They'll never grow and they'll never get where God really wants them to be. Because guess what? Don't I don't want nobody who's going to just tell me what I want to hear. Give me somebody who's going to help me and tell me what I need to hear so that I can get from point A to point B. I'm going to go back and I'm going to make it simple again. Even those that are in the professional world, amen, even those professional athletes, amen, have critics and people that come along to try to what? Help them to get to that next level, amen, and they know that what they're telling them is going to make them better. So can I help you? We ought to all want the truth, amen, not, not what we want, not what we want to hear, not what we think, no, tell me what God says, amen, I'm going to receive it, I'm going to accept it. And guess what? I'm going to change because I know that's what God wants me to do. And can I help you, people of God? As the body of Christ, we will not be strong if we only rely on our own understanding. We will not survive if we only rely on what we have, what, collected along the way. I want to help somebody on this morning. Receive it if you want. If not, I understand. There's some things that we learn in our life. And there's some things that we pick up along the way that God ain't got nothing to do with. <laughs> so you've got to understand this one thing. If we're not operating according to what the Word says, and we're operating according to what the world is telling us to do, guess what will happen? God will not be pleased, and the body will remain weak. But we've got to stay in the book so that God can bless what we're doing. Why? Because it's the truth that will allow us what to grow up in all things. Watch it. In him who is the head. Who? Christ Jesus. So what we've got to understand is this one thing. God has placed Christ, what, as the head of the church. Hear me and hear me well. I'm about to get in trouble now. God has placed the man in the head of his house, right? And so God says this, even when a man and a woman is getting married, he tells her, he says, love your wife like Christ, what, loves the church. So God is a God of what? God is a God of order. And so Christ is what? The head of the church. And God wants us to grow up. What? Grow up to the head who is Christ. Well, how do we do that, preacher? Know the truth. Learn of God's word. Take Christ as an example. Use what Christ has done. And what? Let the mind of Christ be within us. Right? That was also in him. Right? So we've got to make sure that we grow up. To the head who is Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've got to make sure, saints of God, that we constantly, I don't care if you're two, I don't care if you're 42, I don't care if you're 52, I don't care if you're 72. When you say you ain't got to grow no more, I'm running the other way out of your way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because the Bible says that we ought to constantly grow up to the head who is, who is Christ who is Christ Jesus. See, see, Christ is the authority 
is the authority in the church. We don't meet in the name of Pastor Kyle Terrell Sylvester. We don't meet in the name of St. Mary Missionary Baptist Church. We meet in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And when Christ is not the center, can I help you? We are just a social club. We are not the church. Christ has got to be the center of what it is that we do. And see, you've got to understand that Christ is the authority. And the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is 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 lord and all the bible letting us know if you don't give jesus his props right now if you don't acknowledge him as lord and savior right now if you acknowledge him as the boss man right now guess what one of these old days amen praise the lord you're gonna stand before him amen and you're gonna have to bow down before him and acknowledge that he is he is the head I share with my coworkers all the time. I said, man, anybody who's in the educational system, anybody who teaches children, anybody who does what we do and don't have Jesus, amen, I'm praying for them. Amen, praise the Lord. Amen. You need Jesus, amen, to guide you and direct you as you move along your way. And guess what? Don't just say Jesus right, is my Savior. What happens is a lot of people, they don't acknowledge the fact that God, guess what, made Christ, who he made him, not just to be our Savior, but also to be our Lord. See, you got to understand. See, there's some steps in your Christian walk, right? There's some people that acknowledge Christ as their Savior. But guess what? Sometimes a person's lifestyle will show you that Christ is not their Lord. <laughs> Preacher, what you mean? See, you got to understand, when Christ is your Lord, Amen. There's some stuff you ain't going to do. Amen. And not just that. There's some stuff you might do, but the Holy Spirit going to get you if you do do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you got to understand this one thing, that Christ should not just be your Savior, but he should be. He should be your Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And when we allow Christ to be the head, amen, of the church, can I tell you, everything will fall in place. When God's people all over the land, all over the world, allow Christ to be the center, can I help you? Everything gonna fall in place. I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to go somewhere. Amen. Praise the Lord. I pray you with me. Amen. <laughs> hear me and hear me well. Can I help you? When we take a look at Christ, <laughs> this is one thing that you better know. Amen. <laughs> that some of these pictures you see of Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. On some folk wall, amen, Christ ain't got no melanin in his skin. <laughs> amen, praise the Lord. But can I help you? Christ was a, was a man of color. But guess what? God had to show me with that. That guess what? That we can't get caught up in that. Because guess what? When we get to glory, there ain't going to be no white heaven. There ain't going to be no black heaven. There ain't going to be no Asian heaven. There ain't going to be no Japanese heaven. No, guess what? We're going to be uh, in glory all together as one. And so what we've got to understand is this one thing, that when we take a look at it, we've got to let Christ be the head and not focus on some of this other stuff. And you got folk meeting in the name of Jesus Christ, amen, praise the Lord, and can't stand the ground I walk on. Oh, Jesus. But you got folk, let me, let me switch it, you got folk, folk that look like me, that say they meeting in the name of Jesus, that can't stand the ground some other folk walk on. Can I help you? That ain't of God. See, when Christ is the head, God will be able to allow us to love everybody. Christ will allow us to be able to function, amen, as one. And I don't care if you meet a green, white, blue, black, purple Christian across all the way in Australia, your spirits will connect because you know why? Because you serve Christ and not color. When Christ is the head, can I help you? There's some stuff we ain't going to be so focused on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But look what the Bible says. It says in, in, in verse 16, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what, by what every joint supplies according to the effective working. I need y'all to hear me and I need you to hear me well. It says the whole body 
showing, check me out, not just not just laid on the side of each other, but it says joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. When I was 16 years old, I had knee surgery because I was hard headed And I learned a lot when I had that knee surgery. I learned that my knee wasn't just this big bone by itself. There was some parts, amen, a part of my knee that caused me to have surgery when I was 16. See, some folk know about what they call the ACL, which runs down the middle of your knee. Then there's what you call the lateral meniscus, which is on the outside of your leg, amen, that allow you to step to the side, amen, to step to the side, amen. Now, some of y'all can remember that when y'all used to go to Miami Moon, amen, praise the Lord. I'm going to leave that where they said, amen, praise the Lord. And then that, yeah, uh-huh. And then, right, that's the medial meniscus. That's the that's the ligament on the inside or on the on the uh inside part of your knee, right? On this side right here. And so what I learned was is that all these three ligaments, guess what? Help the knee to do everything it needs to do so that I can run and jump and skip and hop and do all the things that I'm able to do. Can I help you on this morning? God has designed the body of Christ so that we work together to where, guess what? We support each other in such a way to where we're able to function. We're able to get some stuff done to where we're able to serve God, to where we're able to tell the enemy you can't have nothing over here, to where we're able to help one another to be better, where we able to help each other operate in our gifts, to where we able to not allow the world to tell us what to do, but we can do God's business, and guess what, get some stuff accomplished. So you got to understand this one thing, if we've been knit, amen, together, wait a minute preacher, help me out with that, <laughs> I want to help somebody on this morning, amen, amen, I want to help somebody on this morning, stop walking around like you don't need nobody. Stop walking around like you are independent of your brother and your sister in Christ. You need them and they need you. Whether you like that or not, the Bible said we have been joined and knit together. And can I help you? It's a bad day when the ligament tell the knee, I don't want to help you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, some of y'all say, well, Pastor, they just call that getting old. Amen. Praise the Lord. But you've got to understand this one thing, that we are not independent of each other. We are dependent of each other. Well, Pastor, what you want me to get out of that? Y'all stop talking about one another. Y'all stop condemning one another. Stop judging one another. Stop beating each other down and realize y'all on the same team. We have been joined and knit together. And can I help you? You know what the Bible let me know? It's a shame that if I got a if I got a two by four in my eye and I look at my brother and I talk about him with the splinter in his eye, first I got to take that two by four out of my eye <laughs> before I can talk about the splinter in his. God says that we've been joined and knit together. And can I help you? <laughs> you didn't, amen, and you can't decide who going to be a part of God's family. <laughs> Sorry, hate to bust your bubble. Amen. I don't like this one. They get on my nerves. I don't know about this. Ooh, I just, well, guess what? You better get over it because you know what God going to say? When you get to glory, do you remember? <laughs> he going to hold us accountable for all that stuff. Amen. We allow to get in the way. See, we must be unified to survive and realize we are fully dependent on each other. I can't pass the pews. Amen. <laughs> and you can't be a part of a church without a pastor. And guess what? We guess what? We need each other. And guess what? As I tell my children, we all we got. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we've got to understand that we are unified and we are fully dependent on, on each other. See, in Romans 12, 4 and 5, look what it says. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many 
are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Can I help you? It's not that we should want to be around each other. We should realize that we need each other. I don't care how big or small you think you are. I don't care how much education you feel you got. I don't care how much education you feel you don't have. Right? We need each other. Right? Why? Because we are individually members of one another. We're not separate. No. We are united by Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look what it says. Look what it says. It says, by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Check what it says. By which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Now, hear, hear me and hear me well. By which every part does its share. Okay, I want to stay there for a minute. You've got to realize that when we take a look at what the Bible says there, that lets me know that every single member or part of the body of Christ, amen, has a function, right? And all of us have a part and a share in doing God's work. And you can't think you bigger than nobody or you can't think you are inferior to anybody We've got to make sure that all of the parts understand that we all are important in the body of Christ. And so when somebody does not uphold their end, guess what? You're not just affecting you, you are affecting the whole body, right? And so can, can I help you? Anybody ever had to go to the doctor for one issue and that one ailment messed up something else? And when that went crazy, that messed up something else. And when that went crazy, it messed up something else. Can I help you? When, when we don't do and we don't function and we don't do our part, we don't just impact our little world. We impact everybody that's a part of the body of Christ. Because it says every part does, does, does its, its share. Right? causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. We're preaching. Why in the world should I do my part? Why should I go out of my way to do what God has called me to do? Why should I do all that I should do knowing that I am not independent but I'm dependent on somebody else to, to do what I'm doing? Because when you do it, it causes growth in the body so that we can actually begin to take care of ourselves. That's how God designed the body. He designed the body to take care of itself. Deliver me from folk who fight against their own body. Right? You got to understand, you, you, when, when, you, when you do something to your brother or sister in Christ, when you condemn your brother or sister in Christ, when you don't want to help your brother and sister in Christ, when you do stuff to work against the church and do stuff to work against your brother and sister, can I help you? You're causing what growth not to happen in the body. The body will be stunning. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so what God says is this. If you want to get somewhere, if you want to get some stuff accomplished, if you want to grow, then you got to do your part and realize that, guess what? Guess what? The next man is going to benefit from what it is, what? From what it is that you're doing. I want to share this. Amen. I'm going to let you go. There's a main piece. Amen. And pastor's going to be talking about it more if the Lord allows him to. There's one piece in the church. There's one piece in the body of Christ. That we, as a church, churches all over the land, churches all over the world, there's one piece that we don't work on. And we feel as though we don't have to worry about it. Wait a minute, preacher. It's called accountability. Nobody wants to be accountable to nobody. If I don't do, I'm good. If I don't show up, I'm good. If I'm not there, I'm good. Right? But you've got to understand this one thing. If you're not there to do your part, how will you help the body of Christ, what? To grow, right? 
And so you got to understand this one thing that happens. Amen. And guess what? And I'm going to go ahead and share it. Amen. I'm going to let you into my world. I've even shared that with the deacons. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, I shared with them that guess what? I need y'all. I need to see y'all. I need to hear from y'all. When I don't hear from you, amen, it does me something. Because guess why? Because you got to understand that we are what? All accountable, what? To each other. Right? And guess what? If somebody's not doing their part, what ends up happening is the body cannot function and the body cannot grow and the body cannot be all that it needs to be. And guess what? We ought to edify ourselves. Right? Edify ourselves. Build each other up. So when you do your part, guess what? Your brother or sister's built up. When you do your part, the body grows. When you do your part, things happen. When you do your part, there's a manifestation of God's power. Right? So we've got to make sure that we operate doing our part and doing our share so that the body grows for the edifying of itself. In love, the body was designed to literally take care of itself. The body was designed to take care of itself. The body was not designed, amen, to work against itself. The body was designed to work together as one to get things accomplished. But watch me now, according to God's divine order. If we don't get that peace, we will never be all God wants us to be. See, the church body is only a body because there's different members doing different things with different functions, but all seeking to accomplish the same goal. And so when we take a look at the church body, people of God, can I help you that as a people that we can't allow the world to dictate to us how we ought to operate. We can't even allow our emotions to cause us to, to operate in a certain way. No, what does God's word have to say? And we are the body. Amen. We are to work together as one. And I'm praying to God that guess what? That we would grab that concept. Guess what? And realize, people of God, if you don't get anything else, remember, it's always bigger than you. It's always bigger than you. It ain't never about you. It's always bigger than you. Right? We are a body seeking to go in the direction God wants us to go in. So guess what? It is all what? To the glory of God. And I want to share this with us. We've got to all do this. And ask ourselves, right, individually, am I doing anything to hinder the growth of the church? That's what you got to ask yourself. Am I not doing something that's hindering the growth of the church? You got to ask yourself that. Now, you got to, now, I know, I, 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 I hear the internet work. Guess what? Guess what? Your pastor do that every day, right? Every day that goes by, Right? What are you doing and what are you not doing to help the growth of the church, right? To help the, the growth of the body. And guess what? Not just St. Mary, right? The growth of the body of Christ. Because why? When we take a look at the church body, we call it what? The ecclesia, the called out ones. Those that God has what called out. Right out of the darkness into the marvelous light. So you've got to understand that we can't just be concerned about St. Mary and all this other stuff. Guess what? We are a body and we should be concerned about Christians all over the world. Because why? We should be working together. We should be doing ministry. We should be doing what we have to do to promote what? The kingdom of God. Because guess what? It's always, it's always bigger than you. It's always bigger than me. Right? And we've got to remember that and we've got to understand that and realize that God got some amazing things in store for us, right? But we've got to understand that, guess what? God is a God of order and the church body has to function the way God wants it to function. God bless you real good, saints. I pray you were blessed on this morning. Amen. And I pray the word of God, amen, bless you in some kind of way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. We thank God for today, and we thank God for all his many blessings on today.